Hey there, it's Enderverse. Today we are back with another monthly wrap up of the best mods released this month and others that were released earlier but were updated during February. The mods I'm about to show you are enjoyable, helpful and surprisingly underrated. So stick around till the end of the video. Justina of Guns is one of the good guns I found throughout February. Including with the mod are some pistols, rifles, shotguns and a few more. To get going, you need to craft a new bench to assemble the primary firearms like the custom SMG, water pipe shotgun, and the revolver. Ammunition along with some attachments are also craftable within the new bench. Ganichi workbench is an upgrade from the previous station as it allows you to assemble rifles with higher damage, accuracy and velocity. Those firearms can be equipped with Yet again, more advanced attachments such as suppressors. Finally, there is the gun metal bench, which will help us assemble short range but powerful guns, those being mostly shotguns. Here's a few clips of me fooling around with some of the guns. I especially love snipers though. They provide a quick and silent death to your targets. Bombs can, oh, bomb your enemies. Score Rifles was my favorite when I used to play Fortnite and it still is my favorite now that I'm using it on a Minecraft mod. And we've got shotguns for taking care of targets within few blocks range. Ah, finally, an update for Dynamic Trees. This is a mod mainly focused on beautifying forests in Minecraft. The bucking process has changed a tiny bit. To harvest the logs, you will have to be patient as the log will take longer to be destroyed. Once it does, the whole tree will immediately follow, all of which will be covered with a simple but incredible animation and a dynamic sound as well. Some trees will take longer than others to fall and you will often come across trees so big they have branches coming out of them. I've tested the mod with the Faithful Texters, which is the most famous pack of all time and it seems to be compatible with it. What's more is that the mod will even run with highly detailed and extremely demanding packs such as Patrix, so there is really nothing stopping you from installing it. To adapt to the horrifying creepers in Minecraft, you should install unbeatable creepers. As the title suggests, the creepers here are nearly unbeatable. If they find that they can't reach you, they will simply morph into a creeper bee and dive towards you with the intention of blowing you up. Remastered structure will enhance the current buildings on Vanilla with bigger and more detailed structures. The author has made several mods and data packs with each one of these structures. So if you happen to like some structures but dislike others, then you could go to the author's page and pick any mod that suit up to you. Lucky's wardrobe includes a few new clothes to wear for different occasions. For instance, we have the desert village suit, which will give you immunity from the hot atmosphere of the desert if you have to have snails and sold. Woolly clothes, in the other hand, will provide you with heating so they are perfect for snow biomes. By the way, I adore the models of the clothes and how they look on me. There's plenty more clothing to do with this mod, so I'd recommend taking in the opportunity. Butchery mod will make it so that you can butcher ruminant and non-ruminant animals in a very realistic way. As you kill an animal, its corpse will drop, which you can hang it on the hook. After you hang the animal, you can bleed it dry, skin it, and divide it into edible meat. This is one of the most realistic and also most brutal mods I've ever seen, and it will add friction to obtaining food, specifically protein, which will help solidify an ultimate survival mud pack if that's what you want. King's Better Animation is an update for the Kelvin's Player Animation mod for the latest versions of Minecraft. The mod will include fluid, vivid and somewhat realistic animations. The only issue I've found with this mod is the absence of swimming animation 
as he will just be walking instead of swimming. The combat will look striking, and your character will also have an improved breathing animation. Third person shooting allowed shoulder surfing reloaded to modify prescriptions on the timeless and classics mod. After running the ESC model just to get those incredible animations on top, and the final outcome was unreal. You'll be able to accurately land bullets on targets since your camera is no longer restricted. You can do a 360 on your character and relocate the prescriptive back and forth and side to the side. Decent biomes comes with a package of few new landscapes. Some of these are vanilla-ish, while others are quite different and special. The amount of biomes here is small, it's not even a double digit number. But that's the point of the video, is to include freshly developed mod, with plenty of potential, so it's a good choice if that's your goal. Sawmill will include this new bench that will function like a stone cutter, but for wood. Using this machine, you'll be able to manufacture any type of wooden materials, so it's even more advanced than the vanilla stone cutter. The sawmill will look amazing and quite captivating with that blade in the middle. With the mod comes a new villager, which is the carpenter. After trading few items with it, the carpenter then can have incredibly valid trades for you, so I would recommend getting one for yourself. $50,000, that's the price of the first city mod, a project produced by giants on the modding community and was commissioned by Mr. Beast himself. The mod is centered around giving purpose to the portal in the ancient city. After killing a warden, a key will drop, which then makes it possible to ignite the portal. Following that, creepy tentacles will be sticking out of the portal, grabbing you to the new first city. The removal of shaders is recommended. This dimension is vast and rendering it all with shaders can put a lot of stress on your components. Shortly after arriving in the city, a new cutscene will unfold, illustrating how scary the eye is. To carry out the mission, you'll need to be doing some parkour and killing a bunch of wardens. Eventually, a checkpoint will appear, leading you to the first task you'll need to finish. Be careful not to be so excited since there are a bunch of obstacles that you will face including massive tentacles that will demolish some parts of the bridge. Now to the main task, which is to fire the skull cannon. Point the cannon towards the red target, press and hold spacebar, and wait for it to charge. The animation for the firing is truly spectacular. The first shot is just to remove the obstacle on the way. The second is the most important and it is to shoot the eye himself. This one comes with an exciting cutscene of the eye defending itself by slapping the cannon away and grabbing you to its direction. From here, you'll be stranded inside the eye. Here you'll be commanded to construct a new cannon, made out of three pieces, each laying in a different island. The first being this volcanic island. Above you are a bunch of ghasts with different design but honestly the same attacks. The first piece is hidden on the peak of this jagged mountain. To reach there, simply use the push from the steam. You'll find plenty around the said mountain and it will propel you forward until eventually you reach the top of the mountain. Simply walk towards the piece and you will be propelled upwards again, this time towards the orb that will teleport you to the platform of the cannon. Second island is kind of a massive space station. The enemies here can be a lot more obnoxious and will come in higher quantities. To locate the second piece, you will need to shut down all the barriers. Using the launch pads, you can arrive at each generator and disable it by right-clicking it. Eventually, you'll be arriving at the second piece, which seems to be the barrel of the cannon. Last island is the less complex one, but also the hardest, as you will have to battle your way out of here. This time, it's not a bunch of bags or gas, but a full-on emitist boss. The strategy of this boss is to summon a bunch of its minions and also shoots some beams from the sky. Although this boss is relatively weaker than the Warden, I estimate it to be as strong as an Iron Golem. Once killed, the boss will drop the final piece, which concludes our cannon. Your final mission now is to shoot the middle of this black hole. After shooting the black hole, it will explode, removing with it all existence.
Salty is realistic forging is a mod that introduces a completely different system for forging metals and metal tools. New craftable tools are introduced such as the tongs that will allow you to carry red hot iron, hammer it down on a new smitten anvil and cooling it on a water source. You can bind the iron together by simply holding one iron on your main hand and another on your off hand. These new binary ingots can be smelted on the blast furnace to produce a hot iron blade. As usual, hammer it down on a smitten anvil, cool it on a cauldron or any water source, sharpen it on a stone cutter and finally solidify its original shape on a grindstone. There are two pieces remaining, the handle and the guard. The guard will need a singular hot iron ingot. You do the hammering and the cooling again and for the handle you craft its raw form as you would with a stick and then form its intended lock on a stone cutter, followed by the grindstone. To produce a finished guard, put the handle on the off hand and bind it with the guard on your main hand. Now supposedly you can craft the sword by simply putting both blade and the guard on this order, but the alpha version that I've installed it turned out to be buggy, so I would recommend installing the beta version instead. Eden Ring was originally an amazing mod for Fabric, adding a new dimension you could travel to. The mod got outdated and sat at 1.19 for a while until a reforked version was released fairly recently, offering a port for the latest versions of Minecraft. The Eden Ring is a massive dimension facing a gas giant. You'll be walking around biomes that are typically quite beautiful and are in the form of divided islands. Some islands are a bit similar to the natural biomes of Minecraft, as they will have sand and stone on their surface. I really enjoyed the sci-fi style of this mod, and now that it is updated for the latest releases of Minecraft, the chances for mod packs of the same style to be assembled have increased radically. Souls-like Universe is an epic fight add-on. I've seen many of those add-ons circling around the internet lately, and this one stood out to me as one of the good options. With add-ons, there will be different armor sets that are quite detailed. New weapons including swords, axes and spears have also been added, and will be animated separately thanks to the Epic Fight mod and the Weapons of Miracles add-on. Within the add-on are new opponents ranging from insignificant warriors to vicious bosses. The add-on isn't anything groundbreaking, but it would be a good option to consider if you are especially interested in collecting add-ons for the Epic Fight mod. This mod will introduce new types of dwellers to Minecraft. Although the dweller concept has been milked dry by many developers, I like this one for the unique shapes and attacks of the dwellers. Those will be massive flying backs that will latch onto you in an attempt to give you a warm, lovely hug. The spider mood dweller is extremely disturbing and you'd be one unlucky bastard if you meet it on an open landscape such as this one. The animation of this new boss is quite captivating and there's a second type of dwellers which will shoot projectiles at you. Those are easy to dodge but will kill you if you don't shield yourself properly. The Mutant Mobs mod will introduce giant types of hostile and non-hostile creatures to the game. An example here is the Warden. A look at this thing, it's like 15 blocks tall and it's quite fast relative to its size. This monster will one shoot you in most cases but I survived mainly because I was cheating. The Peaceful Strider will have a mutant version now that is nowhere near its vanilla origin and its attacks are very destructive and long range too, as it will be shooting some explosive and flaming projectiles at you. I would recommend a potion of fire resistance and a strong shield when fighting this thing. Passive creatures have also been mutated and the iron golem is the only example I could name. Although the mob itself is peaceful, it will not hesitate to murder you if you attack it. I was avoiding this mod mainly due to the bad trailer and the poor representation on the mod page. But when I played the mod itself, these marketing mistakes were quickly dismissed, though it's still harmful to the mod itself since advertising can be crucial to any project. Even if the said mod is decent, bad marketing can easily nullify that. Against the Legions is a new mod made by a developer on the M Creator community. 
Uh, this map will include new types of outposts built with different types of blocks. Within those buildings are some weird and questionable hostile mobs. However, I love the style of the mobs in other structures like the cave camp for example. The mod introduces some awfully terrifying creatures like the Masked, an Enderman with a distinct design, scary sounds and extremely high HP. And on the other hand we have the Decomposed which is a hostile type of iron golems. It's not as strong as the said Masked but it will pose a challenge nonetheless. The mod's purpose is to add an abundance of new clans that are territorial and defensive against players. Celestial Exploration is a simple space invasion mod. With the mod are some advanced spaceships that will allow you to penetrate the Earth's atmosphere and observe this scenic look of both the Earth and the Moon. To travel to the Moon, simply jam into it. You will then teleport to its surface, which will have a different feel and is devoid of any gravity. I would recommend disabling shaders if you want to see this amazing view of the hot flaming sun in the distance. This is a very vanilla-ish mod and will appeal to simplistic players for sure. A realistic mod on the list is 10 Air. Digging deep below a certain point will drain your oxygen reserve. Same goes for going very high up on the mountains. Your air levels will gradually drain until you start dying. And in places like the end, you'll quickly die for not carrying something like a potion of free breathing and a respirator mask. Creatures like the drowns can seal the oxygen off your lungs, so I'd recommend not going toe to toe with them as much as possible. This is a very challenging mod to have around, and with the addition of something like Chaffa's Nails, you could easily level up your hardcore experience in Minecraft. Poachism is the funniest and also one of the most useful mods I've come across. A new mechanical engine will be craftable within Minecraft. Upon equipping the said engine and giving it enough fuel, you can then press the hotkey to power up this bad boy. Make sure to kill the engine before leaving as it can run away on its own. When putting too much strain on the engine, you are risking being blown up, so I would recommend being a bit gentle with it. You can equip the engine itself with a custom exhaust and a fuel container for better performance and it will serve you well as it can go very fast at times, ultimately is in transportation overseas. I added the physics mod on top because why not, I just love splashes and the way in which my raft jump over waves. This is a very entertaining mod to have around, but it's not vanilla friendly since Minecraft is based on a medieval era. I don't remember anybody back then packing a mechanical engine so yeah. Thanks for watching, this series of videos will be released at the end of each month so just to stay up to date I would recommend subscribing and turn on the bell. If you have any suggestions for me please write them down in the comments and then make sure to take a brief look at them. Now I'll see ya in the next one my friend.